Okay, we, we all saw your impassioned uh, speech or statement at the Senate the other day, no, James. Uh, you were saying that the motorcycle taxis uh, is the only alternative for Filipinos who are suffering right now. Can you tell us more about that? Well, I wouldn't say the only, but I'm just looking yeah. at it as a alternative medicine. I mean, if we tried to reframe it so that people could understand, take it out of the lens that we always look at it. And because we just keep going backwards and forwards and we're pointing left and right. I want people to point forward because this needs to be addressed in a different way and with the urgency of a health crisis. And the why I wanted to use that analogy was because, yes, it's not the safest form of transport. Personally, I don't agree with it either. Mm -hmm. I would not want to ride a motorcycle taxi, but it's not up to me. Yeah. It really comes down to what people need. That is what should be addressed. And if you approach it from that, you could look at it as an alternative medicine. Mm -hmm. Look, it's not FDA approved. You take it at your own risk, mm -hmm. no therapeutic claims. But if you're suffering and you got nothing else, you'll take that. That's why I also use the analogy of noodles and sardines. Mm, yeah. Not a balanced diet. But hey, if you're in an evacuation center, you got nothing else. Please don't tell me what I can and cannot put in my body when I'm trying to survive. Mm -hmm. We also look at when we talk about safety. I agree. It's not the safest uh, form of public transportation at all. In fact, it's probably the least. Mm -hmm. But you have to take into account that when somebody makes a decision to get on board a motorcycle taxi, they've weighed that risk out against things that you have no idea of. Mm. The urgency they need to get home, how much they miss their families, perhaps they're, they're just feeling horrible, perhaps they, it's up to them. You can't have a regulator decide, you know what, the risk outweighs the value. How do you know? You're not in my position. And we're dealing with, with, with suffering. It's different. It's not convenience anymore. It's alleviating suffering. You mentioned um, yung safety because that's the number one thing that the uh, technical working group are saying that they're looking at no? Kung how safe are motorcycle taxis as a form of public transport. I'm looking at figures from 2018 because number one ang motorcycle in terms of cost and fatalities. It's nearly half of the total fatalities for... True, yeah, but they're, okay. they're basing that on which data? The mm -hmm. private data, right? Yeah, yeah. They don't. They admitted yes on Monday that they didn't have the data from the motorcycle taxi sector. So if you're getting that from the private data, there's really no way to say how these people were trained. Mm -hmm. So I 100% agree You're talking with about you. your private, your private mga, motorcycle... Let's just, yeah, let's just get straight to the yeah. point. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay? yeah. We, we call them camote mm -hmm. riders for a reason because we don't. They, they're not trained, they bought their licenses, and they're just chaos out there. And this is the battle that I think we're trying to also face is that a lot of people feel that if we allow more motorcycles on the road, we're going to have more of these camotes mm -hmm. on the road. Camotes come in all shapes and sizes. Four wheels, two wheels, eight wheels, yeah. 18 wheelers. It's really about the person, the nut behind the wheel, so mm. to speak. We need to address that. That is a separate issue to motorcycle taxis. That comes down to LTO in the issuing of the licenses and the rider and driver education. Once again, it's not exclusive to two mm. wheels. Yeah. So. Let's look at motorcycle taxis differently. What in that space has been the safety record? Ancas claim 99%, yes. but we can only take their word for it. Mm. I understand also the TWG can't just accept what the company will say about themselves. But have you tried? I have. Angas? Yeah, I, 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 because I was trying to catch oh a flight. And I felt a bit, I, I felt safe, it, I, I must say. Yeah. It, it, it can be a little nerve wracking, mm, and yeah. I've done it in, in Thailand as well. Um, it's really the only way I go around Bangkok if I have to you commute around there. It's either their, their BART system or the, when I'm on the ground, it's that because the tuk tuks are a rip off. Yeah. So I use the motorcycle taxis, and yeah, it's, a, it's an adventure. Mm -hmm. But once again, it's up to us to weigh out that risk. I can see where government's coming from, but I can also, if we reframe it as a national health crisis, because name me one other disease that affects tens of millions mm -hmm. of Filipinos in the prime of their lives, and these are economically the most productive members of society. If that was a disease of any other kind, you would throw everything you had at it. You would mm -hmm. declare a state of emergency, everything would stop until we fix it. Look at coronavirus. I mean, we, of course, it's, it's a big thing. We only have isolated cases and we're jumping on it. Mm -hmm. Rightfully so, that's the way you gotta look at it. So here's a disease affecting tens of millions and we're going, ah, well, you know, we can't mm -hmm. do anything. That's just traffic. No, mm -hmm. traffic is, is a man-made disease. So it comes with man-made solutions. When you talk about the weather, yes, we react to the weather because there's nothing we can do about the al. It's yeah. nature. But when you've created a problem, a man-made problem, you can solve it. So don't talk to it. Don't speak about it like you're just reacting to it. You can change it. And it's not rocket science. That doesn't mean to say it's not easy. Mm -hmm, yeah. When I say it's not rocket science, you don't have to think outside the box because there are 
many different solutions that have been tried and tested in markets similar to ours. I, I want to ask you, what do you think about Yung how the uh, technical working group is like in a, some sort of a war against Angkas in particular? Diba yun din yung sinasabi, even Senator Recto was pointing that out, that yeah, he, they seem to be re like really mad at um, He said Angkas it seems or, to be fueled by revenge. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I, it's hard not to take that take away from that because it was like we want to blacklist them, we want to ban them. Now, I'm not here to defend Lankas. Mm -hmm. They've done some things wrong as well and obviously when you get on the wrong side of the regulators and you court public sympathy like they did, you have to also weigh out that risk. Yes, you might get the public sympathy but you're going to, and they say don't fight City Hall. But I understand that. But please, it's like when the parents fight, don't let the children suffer. We are the children. Yeah. We are the ones on the road and we're paying for your personal vendettas against each other. I get where Ancas is coming from. I get where the TWG is coming from. Can you keep that contained in one room and the children don't suffer? This has to just don't take away our remedies to our problems out there. Mm -hmm. Because once again, it comes down to a choice. People say, but it's not safe. Mm -hmm. you know. I, but then don't ride it. Okay. Nobody's forcing you to ride it. But don't take away that option from somebody who's desperate, who sees that as the only way mm -hmm. to get home. How about the entry of the new players? Even Grab wants to come in now. Ang sinasabi ng TWG, you can come in after yeah. the pilot test. Uh, you also mentioned monopoly na rin in your, yes, in I, your speech. Eh? Because yeah. I, I wanted to point out the fact that if you, there's a saying about if you do the same things over and over again, expecting a different result, mm. I don't want us to be in that position again. We went through the whole Uber drama and when people flash back to those days, I don't think you're going to find anyone that says ride sharing is better today than it was when Uber was here. Mm -hmm. You'll struggle to find one person who doesn't work for Grab that will tell you that. Mm -hmm. And they managed, what I'm getting is they managed to ruin that. Like they regulated it into a monopoly. So the worst case scenario that I was painting out in 2017 literally happened with Grab. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to implement the same thing, have the same conversation because we're only swapping two wheels for four. Everything else same pretty thing. much yeah. remains mm -hmm. the same. Mm -hmm. If you're going to do the same thing and expect a different result, that is insanity. Let's learn from that and let's take it another direction. That's why I said let's change. It's time for change because this is the only way out of this mess. Okay, if you were to recommend maybe some changes in, with regards to the to the law that they're going to come up with to make this legal motorcycle taxis or ano ba dapat yung tingnan pa ng uh, TWG like in, ter in terms of fares or I don't I don't know would you make any recommendations? The first thing we need to do is get it legalized mm -hmm. because if it's not legalized and it doesn't have its own space to work in, then you're going to have all sorts of problems. For example, insurance. Insurance yeah. won't cover you and rightfully so because they say that's an illegal activity. Mm -hmm. So you can't have people running around on something that we already know and we agree. Even people who support the idea agree it's unsafe or not the safest. Um, you can't have them running around without insurance. So legalize it first, create the space for them. Everything else can be worked out. But it's how we approach it that I really wanted to drum in. I want to drum in now. If you have a problem, let's say you're trying to cure a disease. If you're looking at it from how do we cure this disease, because it's an awful disease, we don't want our, our citizens to have this, you will approach it one way. Mm -hmm. If you approach that same problem, we want to sell a drug that will cure, cure. this disease, yeah. you're coming in from a completely different angle. You're no longer thinking about the public. You're thinking about how do I lock out my competitors and get my drug in and make money. Mm -hmm. That's what we have to break. Stop looking at it like that. It is a disease and we have to alleviate the suffering. That is the only concern here. Please don't look at it as mm. how we can make money out of it or how yeah. you can peddle or regulate the cure. Look at it first at how to alleviate suffering. And then from there, everything else is negotiable when you're coming from the right angle. Don't come to the table from a different angle or a different motive. Come in like that sincere mm. and everything else can be worked out. You wanna talk about safety and insurance? Let's say every big player that comes in or every player that comes in needs to put up a bond. Mm -hmm, yeah. 25 million, let's say. Mm -hmm. I'm just throwing a figure yeah. out in the air. 25 million and that bond is a medical fund. That means that in the absence of insurance or in mm -hmm. the case where insurance takes a long time to pay, you, have a, you can make a bono. Yeah. That's, that's fair. Mm -hmm. You can also have things like, because it's tech, you can also include sachet model style insurance. Mm -hmm. This has been done, I think, in one or two markets that I've heard of where when you book your ANCAS, you can go, I'm going from, let's say, BGC yeah. to Makati, and it'll mm -hmm. say, okay, that's 100 bucks. Yeah. Would you like to add, add extra insurance? insurance? Yeah. It might only be seven pesos yeah. mm -hmm. because you're, it's sachet. Mm -hmm. Now, it's now up to you. You can have to have a baseline insurance, right? Like airlines do. Mm -hmm. 
But this is like when you buy your extra travel insurance. Yeah. But it's up and to you. Yeah. If you value, everyone's life is valued differently economically. Obviously, we're all created equal, but economically, one person who earns a million a month. It's different. Yeah, things. exactly. We have okay. to accept that. It's your choice. Do you want to ensure that right? Or are you feeling lucky today? Parang okay, we'll, we'll continue this discussion, James. Marami pa tayong pag-uusapan at kami po ay mapapanood nyo rin online kahit nasa bahay, trabaho o biyahe. Kayo nakatutok pa rin sa Busina Balita sa CNN Philippines. Kasama pa rin natin si James Deacon, CNN Philippines motoring expert. Okay, we're done with the um, issue on motorcycle taxis. I want to ask you this kasi kanina lang sinabi to ni uh, Secretary Villar, DPWH, sa Malacanang Press Corps. He was saying that by the half of 2020, 20, 20 to 30% of EDSA traffic will be cut down because of NLEX and Harbor Link and Skyway Stage 3 project. Um, what do you think of that? Is that possible? Well, I've driven it, so um, I believe him because we, we drove that stretch together as much as, uh, as much of it as we could because it's not 100% complete. And yes, it will definitely... What are you talking about? Which one? The right. connector okay. from and Balintawak to, okay. uh, to the SLEX. So, may bungi pa, so we couldn't quite cross it, but he was able to at least show me mm -hmm. and we were able to visualize the, the whole thing. So I, I do agree because normally I, I'm not, I don't think building more roads is the answer. Okay. I know that's not a popular thing to say, but you can't, if you add more roads, you add more cars. That's, it's simple, right? You attract that behavior. It's like the same, somebody said before, it's like trying to control obesity by buying bigger belts. Mm. It's not going yeah, to yeah. work. Mm -hmm. So, but I do support, there are certain roads that will buck that trend when the road goes around. Mm -hmm. It's a circumferential road, or in this case, it's a connector road that bypasses the major points of Manila. That's great. I'm 100% supportive of that. And I do believe Secretary Villar when he says 20 to 30%, because we could literally divert traffic around EDSA, and not just EDSA, but around Manila. What personally excites me about this is we can really start to spread the economic growth outside of Metro Manila, because all of a sudden, it becomes kind of feasible We'll see in mm -hmm, yeah. 20, uh, towards the end of the year. We'll see it could be feasible for somebody to live in Alabang and work in Bulacan. Okay. Uh, you'd never consider that now, right? I mean, you'd be crazy to think that. But if that's a 30 minute run, awesome. we're doing two hours. I, I live yeah. in Alabang. It takes me over an hour and a half to get here. So, you five minutes from Kubao to um, Makati, is that possible? I think it's possible yeah. on the Skyway, but I because think it's, it's a little. It's going to take out some cars from. Uh, yes. Yeah, I mean, like it would be, it's definitely possible. Kubao to Makati, mm -hmm. but on the Skyway, but not the Kubao Makati Edsa, Edsa. portion. Mm -hmm. It's a little ambitious, but at the right time of day, yeah, I mm -hmm. guess so. If you take away, the problem is, I think they're looking at 200 or 120,000. Do you remember mm -hmm. okay. what figure that they gave you? They said about 130,000 130, cars 000. out, yeah. Okay, so 130,000 cars out, but we're, Edsa is built for something like 250. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're doing 400 yeah, plus. Yeah. So there's still, even if you take the 130 out, we're still over capacity mm -hmm. yes. for EDSA. Mm -hmm. So we can't get too excited about that. But opening other options, once again, we go back to options. Mm -hmm. These solutions come, as Tugade likes to say, in a basket of yeah, options. Basket there's no, if, yeah. you're, if you have a critical illness, it's not one pill. Yeah. It's a whole prescription. It's a whole medical plan. The same thing for traffic. It's a disease. It needs to be looked at the same way. Okay. Thank you very much to our CNN Philippines motoring expert, James Deacon.